It's time to break the cycle of waste and mess. Time to stop accepting that the way things have been done are the way they should be done. Control Alt Delete everything you thought you knew about how to period. We're flipping the script, we're throwing out the book, we're challenging the period status quo. The Diva Cup is eco friendly, reusable, and offers up to 12 hours leak free protection. So, what are you waiting for? Join the inner revolution with the Diva Cup. The Diva Cup is used for menstrual flow only. Always read and follow the user guide. Hello, Wildcats. It's your boy, Kev, just coming at you like a cancer causing windmill. And this is just to let you know a quick little disclaimer that we are a comedy and crime podcast. So, even though we do cover serious events and true cases, We do like to throw in some dark humor, some inappropriate jokes, and some things may be a little bit offensive, so if you are easily offended and don't like to mix comedy and crime, then this is your heads up to turn that car around and get on out of here. You ain't, your kind ain't welcome here. Get on out of here. Yeah, I think that's about it. So thank you all for listening. Be good, stay safe. And laugh at the dark stuff. Now I'm going to get back to jamming out this little ditty I wrote for my boy Andrew. You're so strong, you're so fucking smart, yeah. Andrew, you found your way to my heart, yeah. Andrew, where'd I go wrong? And I fucking love you. I fucking love you. All right, fellas, like we practiced. Yeah. Two, three, four. Come on down. Come on down. Hanging with the brothers tonight, yeah. Come on down to the brothers' common place tonight. All righty. Welcome, everyone, to the Brothers' Common Place, a comedy and crime podcast where we cover monsters, murders, mysteries, and more. More. And before we jump into today's crazy topic, I want y'all to meet my favorite fruits right on top of the fruit bowl. What's going on, guys? This is Tim. Um, I might have to leave early during this episode. I actually have a uh, Broadway show I need to get to. Um, I'm going to be uh, the star of it. It's, it's weird. I mean, you guys got to see it before you judge it. It's the, uh, a uh, midway between uh, Say by the Bell and the movie oh. Taken. Ooh. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you know, like a crossover between those two. Um, I get to play the son instead of the daughter. Uh, so my name's going to hmm. be uh, Timothy Amber Neeson. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so definitely check that out on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> on Broadway. Well, if this is a fruit bowl, I'm definitely a pear because I just grew one this week. Oh, oh shit. This is Spence. What's up? <laughs> Go, go, take a shit. Ate some Taco Bell. It's two from the brothers. I got to take a shit now. (laughs) And it's your boy, Kev, a.k.a. the Dirty Dog. And I also have some Broadway tickets. I'm going to go see R. Kelly's Trapped in the Closet. And uh, yeah, the Goo Goo Dolls were right. Broadway is dark tonight. (laughs) Oh, fuck yeah. So today, we have a pretty crazy one for you, and like we promised, we are skipping the mysteries this week. So I hope all you fancy feasters aren't afraid of a couple scorpions or tarantulas, because you're about to embark with your favorite brothers out west to Tucson, Arizona. No shit. Because we're heading out west, baby. (laughs) So yes, that is right, Jeremiah. We are heading (laughs) heading out west. This week, we are going to cover the disturbing case of Charles Schmid, a.k.a. the Pied Piper of Tucson, a.k.a. Smitty, not to be confused with, we built this Schmitty on Tootsie Rolls <laughs> from uh, New Girl. You guys like New Girl? Um, I've watched like three episodes. It's I don't not know. bad. It's pretty know. good, actually. I actually do. It's kind of a guilty thing, but I yeah. actually like it a lot. It's pretty I funny. I didn't hate what I saw. Huh. To check it out. So this guy, he is uh, he's a real piece of shit. And there will be an ending to this case, so good news for all of you listeners that like whenever the cases get wrapped up, because our last few have all been mysteries, but this one, it's uh, definitely has an ending. So this episode, this case, it is a listener request from one of our Patreon supporters, Liz Darnell Boston, or Darnall. I fuck it up every time, Liz. but thank you, Liz. Yeah, nice super Liz. cool. It's Carnell. 
Liz Carnell, <laughs> Boston. Liz, come on. You can do better than that. Man, when she sent this, I started reviewing this and looking it up and just studying it. Man, I've never laughed so fucking hard. What? The the topic we're about to cover. What Cheesing the fuck out is, about it, dude. What is funny about this? Everything. Well, <laughs> considering it's about <laughs> underage people that get killed and raped. So the guy's name is the Pied Piper. So, I mean, that can't be good. I, that's not too bad. Yes, it is. Dude. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, okay. It can't be all right. Too bad. You want to have an argument? Here we go. Dude, when I'm in my kitchen, I'm the Pied Piper, them fucking fudge rounds delivering straight to my mouth. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's, uh, that doesn't take away the fact wait, that wait, kids were murdered and raped. Wait, were you making the fudge rounds? Oh. Because you were in the kitchen. Myth busted. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, I honestly didn't even think about like what Pied Piper fucking meant in this context. Oh yeah, I was thinking like the mouth, the well originally the mice, mice guy, right? Yeah, the mice. Yeah, so that's not so bad. Yeah, but he also lured away children. Yeah. Whoa, the fucking original Pied Piper. Yeah, because they didn't pay him for getting rid of the mice. Is this fucking all real? That's the story. <gasps> what? <laughs> yeah. Holy he shit! He used his powers for good to get rid of all their mice. I knew I liked him for some reason. And then when they didn't pay him, he took the children. Who knows what he did with them? We'll find out. He left a I star on the door. Fucking had I didn't know what any of this was. When like when you said Pied Piper, oh, I, I, I had no idea. Don't my story uh, I should read. Hashtag Baker Mayfield, because I think Hugh Jackson called him the Pied Piper. So my main sources for this episode, history dot com, Tucson dot com, the Pied Piper article. Wait, wait, oh, wait, I'm sorry. I gotta ask you. Yes. Is History.com affiliated with the History Channel, which is known for only reporting factual information? Yes, which is why we are going to touch on some awesome uh, Nazi weapons in this episode as well. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So pretty much everything is going to be related to Hitler. And so aliens nice. that are also Bigfoot. <laughs> so uh, History.com, Tucson.com, the Pied Piper article in Life. And also, there's a podcast I listened to that was titled Most Notorious, a True Crime History Podcast. Now, the reason I use that for some research is because they do an interview with the daughter of a very important person in this case. And I highly suggest you all check it out as well because it's super interesting. You see, uh, the main person in this case, Charlie Schmid, mm -hmm. his friend is the one who would end up uh, contacting the FBI and police. Yeah, I read about that and on Wikipedia. And right as the case was actually happening, like the trial, he wrote a book about it, but it didn't get published until like 50 years later. Is it called If I Did It? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. It no. Be. But uh, his daughter is the, is the one who gets interviewed in this because she helped get that book published. So uh -huh. There's no way they purposely did this, but in um, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Charlie's one of the main guys. And then oh, yeah. when they try to bring back one of the old members of the gang, his name was Schmitty. <laughs> There's no way that's on purpose. Huh. I wouldn't think. But that sounds funny if it was, like yeah. kind of like an inside joke. <laughs> this guy's name was Charlie, first name? Charles Schmid. You hear it happened when Charles was in love? No, it happened. He was schmitten with the girl. <laughs> <laughs> now it just sounds uh, like you have a lisp. <laughs> did you hear it happen after him and his date uh, went to Taco Bell? <laughs> he was just shitting with the girl. So moving oh, yeah. on. So here we go. Charles Howard Smitty Schmid Jr. So... It really throws me off. His last name is Schmid, but he goes by Smitty, not Schmitty. You ever know a family whose the way they pronounce their last name just doesn't make any sense based on the way it's spelled? Yes. Maybe they <laughs> pronounced it Smid, even though it doesn't make any fucking sense. There's a possibility. Yeah. yeah. So born July 8th, 1942 in Tucson, Arizona. He was an illegitimate child, born to an unwed mother, and was adopted by Charles and Catherine Schmid. So Mr. and Mrs. Schmid, they were also the owners and operators of Hillcrest Nursing Home in Tucson. Was that was that their only son? God damn it. <laughs> I was going to do uh, Yes, two. I yeah. think so. Why oh, is so, that? So it's a one son there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually... Uh, I had a joke where it was going to be they released a sh uh, like a sitcom about this, yeah. and it was my two sons. <laughs> but I, I didn't oh think God. it would have. I didn't think it was going to be good. Yeah. So thank you, Tim, for uh, making that joke I mean, a minute in. <laughs> I, mean, I, I would have laughed at it honestly. And little baby Charles, he would end up living with the Schmids since he was only one day old. So he got adopted pretty much immediately. Yeah. So yeah, basically that was their kid. Yeah. Absolutely. Did they steal him from the fucking hospital crib? Maybe Schmidt's crib. Oh yeah, I think is uh, where they took him from. <laughs> well, wasn't he wasn't he on a list? 
<laughs> oh, it doesn't even <laughs> sound like that. It doesn't even sound like that. Was it Schmidler's list? <laughs> I love that we all knew what it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, so as far as his relationship with his adopted parents went, I believe he had a, a good relationship with his mother. However, he would get into arguments with his father, and they didn't really get along that well. And then later on, his adopted parents, they would get a divorce. But he was definitely more of a of a mama's boy rather than a daddy's boy. That's weird to say. It'd have been cool if he was a grandma's boy. Yeah. It'd be a good movie. Yeah, I, I like that movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah, I love the movie. Uh, we don't have yeah. DDR, so uh, you're dumb. Or <laughs> whatever he says, dumb, yeah. <laughs> how good he is at it, dude. Uh, what's high score mean? Did I break it? So there's not a whole lot of information about his early life, but you will see that he was said to have been an intelligent kid, even though he never did that well in school. He was attractive and he was athletic. He excelled at gymnastics as well, and he even led his high school team to a state championship. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Hashtag for, wild man. For, if you take out the attractive and athletic part, hashtag wild man. <laughs> He's just like us. <laughs> so it was for gymnastics? Yes. Huh. That's still pretty cool, though. I, I hope he just did that thing from old school where he's doing the rings, but he's also smoking. Oh, fuck it. Uh, this one. <laughs> However, during his senior year, and almost in time to graduate, he got suspended after getting in trouble for stealing tools from a machine shop. And I don't know why exactly he got suspended from school for that, but he would end up never returning back to school. So as soon as he got suspended, he was like, fuck it, I'm calling it quits. But in the Life article that I read, they're like, even though he was suspended, he still always hung out at the school to pick up girls and like nice. oh, smoke yeah. cigarettes and stuff, I guess. And they keep uh-huh. in order. Yes, they do. Yes, they oh, do. Oh, shit. So we mentioned that he was an attractive young lad, but there's something really odd about the way he looks as well. You see, he was said to have been completely obsessed with his own looks. And why he might be obsessed with his looks so much was because old Smitty here was trying to compensate for his short stature, being only five foot three. Wow. Which more power to him at this point. Like you gotta be confident when you're at that height, like Danny Bonaducci. But Smitty, he took it to weird lengths. Like he started wearing pancake makeup, which I think is just foundation. But he would also give his skin like a darkened tan with it as well. He also dyed his hair jet black. And I heard he also dyed like a little, like some of his chest hair as well. Uh, let's see what else he did. He wore white lipstick sometimes. And he even had a mole that he would paint on his face. And they said like as time went on, he would draw it like bigger and bigger. I feel like everything you just said makes somebody look worse. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like naturally yeah. he's not a bad looking dude. He's yeah. like a decent looking guy. But as time goes on and he does this weird shit, he looks really fucking weird. So yeah, there's none of those things could have been any good for his looks at all. Yeah. The last time I seen someone put that much face paint on, <laughs> Andrew was still on the podcast. <laughs> And he was a juggalo. Oh, yeah. Dude, my most embarrassing moment, one time me and JP, we went to a medieval, like a renaissance fair, painted up as ICP. Oh. Yeah. It's fucking real embarrassing. I was super young. I was probably like 13. Yes. And I remember we walked by the part where it's like a like the guy who has like his head in that little board thing and he heckles you to pay money to throw like peppers at him. We walk by and I remember him being like, oh shit, Shaggy 2 dope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I was so was embarrassed, dude. That's why he was in the stocks. <sighs> Because he was a fucking juggalo. Because he knew. But no, he just made fun of me the whole no, time. No, that was his punishment. You're lucky you didn't end up in those. We find out that uh, that guy in the socks was actually Andrew. Now, as far as other strange looks that he had going on, he would also use a type of putty to like mold the shape of his nose, which he would claim was because it got broken in a fight. However, one thing about Smitty, he is a pathological liar. He lies constantly about everything. I'll, I'll go ahead and be the one to crack this joke, but a type of putty, that sounds silly. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking dumb. Uh, hashtag Paramore. But yeah, he would uh, he would tell girls that he had terminal diseases and that he had connections to the mafia and random stuff like that. Dude, we had a guy at Bob's that did that, remember? Which one? Where if he smoked another cigarette, he would die. Oh, yeah, like we'd min- see him smoking. Minutes later, he was smoking, and he told us a story about how he met one of the Olsen twins and how they had a crush on him and wouldn't leave him alone. Oh, oh yeah, fuck off. Yeah. 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 That would just piss me off. Yeah. The, I mean, the cigarette thing I thought was fucking hilarious. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, in case you can't tell, uh, Smitty, he's super arrogant and narcissistic. But yeah, he would like tell girls, 
He'd be like, yo, so uh, what's yo, pretty baby, you wanna you wanna bend over? Maybe I can put it in your asshole. And she'd be like, well, no, I mean, we just met, and you know, I'm not really into that. I fucking got leukemia. <laughs> She's like, all right. <laughs> But what a piece of shit, though, to be like, to get laid. He'd be like, you know, I got fucking leukemia, so change your mind at all? (laughs) (laughs) That had to have worked maybe like two out of ten times anyway, though. There's no way that worked a lot. Let me see if this will show up here since I got some sound bites from our official hype man, John Uh, the Wild Man from Queens. We got uh, something right here we're going to play. See if this will show up. Can you fucking believe this prick? Get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say was, uh, I don't know why this guy's lowering his standards, or like, how can I put it? Why he's still trying to go for attractive girls when he's making himself ugly? He needs to like level the playing field and just go to a burn ward. Those girls got to be desperate. Burn ward. Oh. Holy shit. Didn't you make a joke a long time ago? It was like a Bernie Sanders. It was about Andrew picking up chicks at the burn <laughs> ward. It was called Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Remember when you did that? Actually, no. Dude, the only like time I think I've ever felt humanity is the fucking burn ward girl from Shallow Hell. Yeah, Dude, don't you fu- no. Okay, Jeremiah. Now don't I you- feel it. Now I feel it. Don't you fucking lie to our <laughs> listeners. I was with you watching that, and I remember you laughing your ass off every time. You heartless brick. <laughs> it's a horrible movie, but that part's sad. No, oh, yeah. I hate that movie so much. I, you know what, Jeremiah? I'm gonna enjoy killing you in Kingdom Hearts later. You fucking heartless monster. Oh my god. And a lot of the lies that Smitty made up, they all seem to have been created in order to like manifest some awe and sympathy for him. So he was always, like, he never told the truth, and it was all lies so he could try to gain shit out of it. And Schmid, he once told a girl that he had murdered a young man who had killed his girlfriend in a car accident, and he said that he cut off his hands and then buried him in the desert. So, like, he tells these stories to sound badass, but he's like, yeah, I murdered this guy once. That's because he killed my girlfriend in a car accident. So, like, he, like, tells these stories, so it's like you... You'll think he's like mysterious and cool, but then feel bad for him about eh, something. I feel like well, he's a piece of yeah, shit. So that's, yeah. not, that's not really going to get you laid, buddy. Yeah, but really, it was just because he took the last copy of uh, No Man's Sky on the first day of release. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so he got disappointed like all of us. Good. <laughs> and he's like, so what about that? We uh, Am I going to hit that shit now? She's like, well, no. I mean, you just you cut that guy's hands off. He's like, I fuck it. I got it, leukemia. It was so She's he like, couldn't oh, use the whoa. controller. Here are my tits. That's why he cut the heads off. <laughs> oh, Dude, yeah. what about if this guy wanted to get laid? He just had to go to a, to a King of the Hill convention dressed as cotton. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my favorite parts about this guy, since Smitty is a little bit of a shorty at 5'3", he would wear these giant ass cowboy boots that were like way too many fucking sizes too big. And he would stuff the inside of them with rags and tin cans. Like, we were talking like three to four inches of shit to make himself taller. And he couldn't even walk that well because of them. So he staggered around, sort of like a cartoon pirate with two wooden legs. <laughs> oh It'd be or, funny if he got ones where the toes were like long and curly, because then he would just accidentally make himself look more like an elf. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he wore these giant fucking cowboy boots. And there's a picture in that book. That uh, that guy's daughter wrote where the police, after they pick him up, they empty out his boots and it's fucking unreal. So and that, like one of his friends is like, yo, I uh, is anyone see I bought one of those cans of beef jerky. It's sort of like in that little chew container and I can't seem to find it anywhere. Does anyone know where it is? And then uh, Smitty just sort of like sweating a little bit. He's like, yeah, I, I also had a tin of Altoids. You guys seen those? <laughs> Oh man, See, if it's the sour ones, then he's in trouble. I it, want those. It sucks because, like, I I'm guessing this guy's gonna be in like a complete tool. I mean, he's already a complete tool, but I kind of feel bad for him, like right now. I'm and also, I, I know it's gonna get bad. I'm also kind of getting a already Luca Magnata vibe from him. Well, yeah, mm. yeah, but I mean, I didn't have video evidence of it. But oh, yeah. what 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 was his line? Uh, people people say about me. Oh yeah, a lot of people tell yeah, me that. A lot of people tell me that. So in case you couldn't tell. Charles, he tried to look like Elvis Presley as much as he could. That's why he was always dyeing his hair and, and slicking his hair back. And he would even try to do like the droopy eyes and the lip thing he would do. And one source even claimed that he would pin his lip with like a clothespin to try and get it to like stay up. That doesn't work. Shit, dude. So, Wait, from so the like, picture you showed us, it's like black and white. So it's like 60s, 70s era? Well, he was born in 42. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And all this happens when he's in like his early 20s. So all yeah, right. definitely early 60s. Okay. He believed the shit his parents told him. If you make that face, it's going to stay like that. He's like, oh. <laughs> uh-huh. It's like, did you hear me? Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> And his mama cries. <laughs> and after dropping out of school, he began living in his own quarters on his parents' property. And his mom, they a lot of sources say that she was a um, an enabler. And she gave him an allowance of $300 a month. Whoa. Which, Back then? L- let's say Smitty yeah. was 18 when he dropped out of school. So that would have been 1960. With inflation... Three hundred dollars in nineteen sixty equals out to two thousand five hundred and sixty one dollars now. Damn. Jeez, Every dude, month. that's like a good job. Yeah. So this motherfucker never had a job. Yeah. Because he got this he got this money. Like I wouldn't fucking work if my mom was giving Holy me almost fuck, three grand man. a month. Well, with the Patreon now we make like fifty G's a yeah, month. Yeah, man. You guys are fucking each. Right. Well, each. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah, are each. each. Like yeah. even like Conor McGregor, he like he he can't he makes all these jokes he's, about money and he can't yeah. do it towards he, he's us. He's actually at the door right now. I yeah. Has to borrow money and shit. Yeah. We told him he's still not replacing Andrew, even though Andrew's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they do have the same tattoos, I, pro- I do. I, 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 pro- I probably had the name wrong, so this probably isn't funny. But I'm pretty sure Cardi B is about to fucking drug us. Oh my god! Yes. Is that the right name? Yeah. Yeah, oh dude. What do you mean you want to go back to your room to have sex? You know I only got six bucks in my wallet, right? <laughs> god damn it! I don't know how this fits. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of like Andrew getting uh, Conor McGregor's tats. But instead, he just gets uh, Amy Schumer's tats. But for some reason, on his stomach, it just says Notorious (laughs) (laughs) P.I.G. Dude, all right, you guys are gonna fucking hate me for this. And this, I mean, this is this is on topic, linked to what you're just saying, but super off topic from that. But uh, she has a Netflix special. Oh yeah, and I fucking watched it. Uh, Oh okay. And it's one of the stupidest fucking yeah. unfunny things I've ever seen in my life. You redeemed Dude, yourself. Two of her jokes that went on for like half hour were one about how her pussy sinks. Yeah, okay. And another about how she had diarrhea. <laughs> While being and, pregnant too, probably? No. Did one oh. of those lead to the other? I oh. uh, no. One of them led to her talking about how two people got shot outside of watching her movie uh, Trainwreck in the theater, which oh. actually happened, I guess. Hmm. But it fucking went from that to her trying to talk about something serious. Hmm. So you expect me to think you're being serious after you just told me that your pussy stinks. So when she was talking about her pussy stinks, did she take off her mask and it was actually gold dust? <laughs> <laughs> My pussy she stinks. stinks. Dude, you yell that backstage. Dude, That's so, so fucking crazy. funny, dude. I don't know how to make this joke, but the punchline is Cardi B comes over and tells me she wants to have some sex like while we're recording right now. So we go back into the room in the Tim's room yeah. and then she comes back, comes back out like 10 minutes later with four bucks and the gum from like those pack of cards. <laughs> <laughs> and I come out I'm like, oh, holy shit, where'd, uh, where'd my life savings go? Did that bitch steal that? We're like, no, Kevin, you still got those four plastic ninja stars. <laughs> but at the end, she's a page round. Oh. So, I mean, is it worth it, guys? Yeah. yeah. So I'll take it. If it's worth it, go ahead, Cardi B, and fucking work it. <laughs> uh, take my wallet out and look and see I only got three bucks. I didn't even go with the song, so here we go. Wait a minute. I'm also trying to, like, you have plastic ninja stars, like, from the Dollar General. <laughs> yeah. Or, like, the ninja set or whatever you call it. Yeah. And, like, one time I broke into, like, I was, like, desperate. I need a spare tire. So, I, like, broke into Kevin's trunk thinking he had, like, a spare back there. Yeah. And I literally found out he's been driving around the entire state of Ohio buying out all the Dollar General's ninja star <laughs> sets. <laughs> he had fucking all of them. <laughs> the funny thing is, I like how you've known Kevin for years and didn't already expect that. <laughs> the way I'm picturing this is, like, you're in the trunk. You're like, what the fuck? The camera shows you looking in the trunk, and then it's a view of you shutting the trunk, and then I'm... I'm standing behind you. I'm like, oh, hey, Jeremiah. <laughs> Isn't Kevin like an eighth ninja anyway? Uh, He did pass the caterpillar test. So Dude. he's at least past level three. Dude, don't act like it wasn't the fucking wizard test originally. Oh, it was wizard. That's yeah. it. Shit. Okay. We were in fucking high school doing this shit. We would go to playgrounds and Tooth would say it was the wizard test. And we, like as fucking adults, 
he, we would do these fucking children's <laughs> obstacle courses <laughs> and be like, we did it. We're real wizards. Yeah, and like, <laughs> like we would like we would like jump over a swing, like just like the spot where you sit. We like walk over it and be like, "That's level one. What's level two? And there's like, I remember at, at at this Denny's there was a like caterpillar, like a uh, fuck jungle gym thing, and we just had to climb to the top and climb back down. We're like, "That's level two done." <laughs> One note, though, some sources claim he graduated and some claim that he never went back to school, so I'm not exactly positive. I'm pretty sure, though, he just dropped out right there. But regardless, he never gets a job after he's done with school since he's getting that money from his mother now. And his parents, they also pretty much left him alone to do whatever he wanted. Like, they even got him a new car and a motorcycle. So, like, he drove, like, a new car. Yeah, what the fuck? And even though he's, like, a, a piece of shit, like, he's a creepy weirdo dude. But the ladies, they actually did love him because he's not a bad looking guy at all. I mean, he gets weirder and weirder looking, but the girls loved him. The guys thought he was cool. He was 18. At, he had his own place. He had a lot of money, a new car and a motorcycle. So we spent most of his time just partying and banging chicks. Sounds like Andrew. The thing is, like, he as he got a little bit older, like when he got into his like, early 20s, he still hung out with high school kids. So it's like all these kids in high school, they think he's like the shit. They think he's cool as fuck because they're too young and naive to realize that he's a fucking loser. Yeah, it's definitely getting pretty weird. Pretty much how like all like all the young guys liked us working at the restaurant because they didn't know we were all losers. Yeah, they didn't know yet. Just like that. And that's how we met Andrew. (laughs) And then he did learn. And And you see what happened once once Andrew learned we were losers. (laughs) He fucking left. Yeah, he left, and he's like the backup for ICP. The thing that kind of sucks is he's taken all of our Patreon money with him. Like, we don't have our passwords to that. He literally just takes it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what, guys? Just just don't even sign up anymore. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. If you're signed up, unsign up. Yeah, it's actually actually fueling Andrew's um, drug addiction. Yeah. (laughs) Now, here's a quote from nydailynews.com. Quote, he told wild tales of sexual conquest, and this is his quote, I can manifest my neurotical emotions, emancipate an epicureal instinct, and elaborate on my heterosexual tendencies. So, in case you didn't know how big of a fucking douchebag this guy was, that right there alone lets you know. Hashtag Wildman. And also hashtag Wildman. My dad's like, what the fuck? That guy reading from a journal? I was like, no, dad, we didn't say anything about how you hate everyone in Africa. So, Dude, honestly, you can pass that quote as a Kyrie Irving quote and no one would judge yeah, you any dude, different. Easily. Dude, yeah. Kyrie used to be so lovable, man. Now he's just like, he's such a narcissistic douchebag i couldn't imagine being around him at all that's the price you pay for getting woke dude Tooth, did you see the um the tweets from that it was like an ex-football player but like it like looked like he straight just had schizophrenia uh, i don't know and charles schmid he was called the pied piper because he was charismatic and had many friends in the teenage community and also because of his ability to get young teen girls to fall for him oh, was he pewdiepie and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but not quite as many subscribers on YouTube, so. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I like PewDiePie. I don't really watch any of his videos, but um, I know the whole N-word thing when that happened. Uh, but, I mean, he seems like an all right guy. Dude, there's a, uh, it's him and something called, like, the T-Series, and they're, like, the. Those yeah, they're going for most subscribers. The first to 100 million subscribers, and he made a diss song to them, like, a month ago, and it's so fucking funny. It's called Bitch Lasagna. What What is yeah. T-Series? I don't even know what that is. You know what's funny? I actually Googled it, or I YouTubed it, and I couldn't find anything about it. Huh. So I was like, is it a channel? What the fuck is T-Series? I have no idea, and I didn't want to Google, because I'm Team PewDiePie. And like we mentioned, teenagers that he's hanging out with, they're too young and naive to realize that he's just a fucking loser. So instead, they enjoyed partying and hanging out with him. And the girls, they all thought he was cool. Uh, Speaking of, how you girls doing back there? Uh, Don't stay up too late. You got school tomorrow. Uh, And and since he had his own place. And uh, yeah, the wine cooler. Yeah, drink as many wine coolers as you want, uh, Dad. And... uh, (laughs) 
And since he had his own place and lots of money, like he would always throw parties and he would help friends out in need. Like if friends needed money, he'd be like, yo, let me help you out. Oh. If uh, girls that he knew were sick, he would send flowers to them. That's nice. So he's doing nice but super douchey things. Yeah, just you do know? this for girls that are like fucking 20. Like mm. why do they have to be Because they don't fall teenagers. for it, man. They already, they already got money. No, they don't. They're oh, 20. Yeah. I fucking have shit when I was 20. <laughs> Dude, I got a set back to your dad. Yeah. Or come back to your dad. So, like, you know when, like, people wear Daisy Dukes and the pockets stick out? Whoa, watch where you go with this next part, man. Those are his swimming trunks you're talking about. Dude, <laughs> I went over to Kevin's Homemade. house. Homemade. And I was like, yo, Kev, dude, your dad's fucking pockets are sticking out really far, man. Those Daisy Dukes are pretty high up. And he's like, those aren't his Daisy Dukes. It's just his nuts split on each side and they're hanging down. <laughs> he got into a fight with the donkey again. <laughs> and I was kind of pissed when he told me he had change in his pocket to reach down. <laughs> <laughs> but I just found this Cadbury egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anything else before we move on to the crimes? Don't do the crime if you can't look at your watch and see the time. Oh, oh shit. shit. As long as I got a watch, then I'm good. <laughs> do you see they're selling Nickelodeon slime? Again? Uh, Yeah. It's like ketchup at Walmart. It's green ketchup, and they're Ooh. calling it Nickelodeon that slime. That shit's gross. Remember the Easy Squirt, that blue oh, ketchup? Oh, yeah, that shit was yeah. nasty. It didn't yeah. have the same consistency, and it was no. fucking disgusting. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't good. It was, like, runnier. I actually did get slimed at Nickelodeon Studios. I went there when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I mean... Waiting I, for the I, joke? I told, I, told, <laughs> I told him not to go in that back alley, but, yeah. I mean, you know... I mean, the guy was really nice. Well, the, so, the, he made a lot of hits. I like R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> The consistency was kind of different. <laughs> Just a little bit. But, dude, you know what's incredibly fucking sad and it'll really bum me out? Look up Nickelodeon Studios now. Yeah, it's, it just looks like an apartment. It's fucking it, yeah. sad as yeah, fuck. Yeah, it literally dude. just looks like an apartment building. <laughs> it got turned into a blockbuster and then it got torn down. Oh, that would hurt oh, me it, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kev worked there right before. Oh, that was the like best week yeah. of my life. Yeah, Kat was so excited to get out of Bob's, and then like a week later, hey, what's up, guys? I'm back. <laughs> it was it was a good week though, man. I got to uh, arrange about 300 copies of Juno in oh, order. Wow. That's a great movie. Um, I worked with. Uh, this is a disclaimer and language uh, heads up for you guys. I worked with this retarded guy yeah. who was like super fucking cool. I don't know how he did it, but he sold this family. Uh, Mario Kart for the Wii and the steering wheel thing for it oh. and after they left he like was so fucking excited about it and he kept rubbing it in my face I was like yeah dude I get it man you <laughs> sold a Mario Kart <laughs> I was like getting like annoyed by it I was like yeah dude yeah. I fucking get it man I hope they were coming to the store specifically for that so you didn't even sell them shit dude I miss him he's a cool dude dude I'm trying to come up with a joke where uh, Ellen Page and Peyton Manning star in a movie about their foreheads and it's called The Longest Yard <laughs> I still think Ellen Page was kind of cute, though. She was, like, super quick to defend our boy Jesse Smollett. Yeah. And oh, it, fuck. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that sucked. So, alrighty. Here we come to May 31st, 1964. Smitty was 22 years old at this time. And sometime during the night, Schmid, allegedly, he had said this to his friends, quote, I want to kill a girl. I want to do it tonight. I think I can get away with it. Which, that's never something you would, you know, just want to hear somebody say at a party. No, not at all. No. And Smitty, he decided that he was going to pick out just the right person for this. And that unlucky person would end up being a 15-year-old girl. Oh, Jesus. Aline Rowe. You know, it actually would be cool if uh, Henry Rollins did say that at a party, though. I don't know that. I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of Henry Rollins either. Hmm. I don't know enough about him, but he kind of annoys me. You know, I can't even explain him. Yeah, I can. Uh, Joe from Family Guy. <laughs> That's who I always think of. No, I don't even know what the fuck Henry Rollins is even from. I don't know if he's a musician first or after. He's an actor, yeah, too. Yeah, he was the front man for, uh, for uh, Black Flag. He was in Jack Frost. Who is he in oh, Jack Frost? Like the horror movie? No. Uh, the the good movie. one. Oh, come on. The horror movie's a better one. Uh, not, no, dude. This is... He fucks the girl to death Michael on ice pick. Really? Yeah, but cool. that snowball fight, though, dude. Yeah. That harmonica. When he makes the <laughs> when he makes the snowman tits. Oh, yeah. I don't think any of this will make it, but, dude, Henry Rollins always reminded me of, like, the fifth Red Hot Chili Pepper. Like, I just always thought he was. He just had their exact California vibe, really. Yeah. 
So Eileen Rowe, she was a sophomore. She had divorced parents and was also unfortunately friends with 19-year-old Mary French, which was a friend of Smitty's. And it was during that day on May 31st when Smitty had asked Mary to persuade Eileen to go out with him that night. He's like, yeah, we're going to go out with my other friend John Saunders, so get her to come out with us. Hmm. And some sources say different things, and some just skip this part. But it sounds like Eileen didn't even want to hang out with him. Like, they had asked her a dozen times, and they called and asked her until eventually they show up at her house at night, and then she gives in. Like, a lot of the sources say she was at home in, like, not pajamas, but just, like, ready for bed, had her hair in curlers, and, like, wasn't planning on going out at all. Plus, she had to get up early the next morning at 6 a.m. Or, no, she had to be in class at 6 a.m. the next morning for an exam. So, I mean, she didn't want to be going out that night. Did they pressure just by, like, repeating, like, come hang out with us a bunch? Were they just like, come on, Eileen. Oh, (laughs) come out with me. My friend John Saunders. (laughs) Which, uh... He's only five foot three. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, come on, I'm only five foot three. Hey, come on. My nose has got some cream. Uh, my red cowboy boots. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Aileen, uh, she's also known as being a pretty girl and an above average student. But her friend and neighbor, Mary French, who her parents or her mother wasn't very fond of, she shows up at her house that night with Charles Schmidt and John Saunders, finally convincing her to come out with them for a bit. Why did her mom let her go? Well, her mother, like I said, her parents are divorced, so she only lives with her mother, and she's a night nurse. Oh, shit. So she might not even be home. So they waited for her to leave, and the last thing her mother remembers is she leaves the house, and Aline was already in bed. Yeah. So she leaves thinking that Aline's going to be all right and fine and just be in bed the rest of the night, and as soon as she leaves, that's when the others show up to her house. Also, this is 1960s or whatever. So, and his mom, her mom just had like a little bit of cough medicine. So she was probably high on like meth and Oxycontin That's and true. pig's yeah. blood and whatever else was in that stuff. <laughs> and she just had a Coca-Cola too. So oh. she was high on cocaine. Oh, mm. She was speeding. Maybe a little Kraft mac and cheese in there. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's Some too, toodaloo. That's, that's a little too much. <laughs> That's like, that's not even schedule one. That's like schedule zero. (laughs) So yeah, her mother didn't like Mary and she didn't really care for the other boys either. And Aileen, she didn't really care for the the two guys either. And she once told her mother that Smitty was creepy and quote, he just makes me crawl, but he can be nice when he wants to. That's the money talking. Oh my God. These women out here. He's creepy. He's ugly. He's actually pretty short and nasty and a, a horrible person, but you know, he's... It's kind of nice sometimes you know, he when too, he buys me shit. He ain't too bad. He bought me a Zune. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. And according to Mary's testimony later, she and Smitty had talked previously and frequently about how he would kill Aileen by hitting her over the head with a rock. Oh, fuck, So this dude. is something that he's thought about doing. And as far as I know, the sources say his reasoning for this is he just wanted to know what it was like to kill somebody. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's fucking disgusting. This sounds like a George W. Bush plan to use a rock. (laughs) (laughs) But first, watch this drive. (laughs) So the four of them, they got in Smitty's car and they drove out to the desert to drink beer and hang out. And this is one thing they would do. Like they would go hang out and party in the desert. So this isn't something that seemed like uh, suspicious or weird. And this next part is taken straight from the Life magazine article that I mentioned earlier. According to Mary French, they got out of the car and walked down into a wash where they sat on the sand and talked for a while, the four of them. Schmidt and Mary then started back to the car. Before they got there, they heard a cry and Schmidt turned back toward the wash. Mary went onto the car and sat in there alone. After 45 minutes... Saunders appeared and said Smitty wanted her to come back down. She refused, and Saunders went away. Five or ten minutes later, Smitty showed up. Quote, he got into the car, says Mary, and he said, we killed her. I love you very much. He kissed me. He was breathing real hard and seemed excited. Then Schmidt got a shovel from the trunk of the car, and they returned to the wash. 
Quote, she was lying on her back and there was blood on her face and head, Mary French testified. Then the three of them dug a shallow grave and put the body in it and covered it up. Afterwards, they wiped Schmidt's car clean of Aline's fingerprints. So, yeah, that's fucked up. They just did that. Like, not only did this guy kill her for no reason, he got two of his friends to fucking go along with it. That's ridiculous. Most sources say that Charles and John Saunders, they raped her first. And then uh, Charles, like, either tried to strangle her or that didn't work, so he smashed her over the head with a rock. And then some sources say that John Saunders didn't rape her because he was gay. So I don't I don't I know mean, about that part. This is six to say, but, like, how the fuck would they know? I don't know. So this, not, yeah, uh, I'm just reading over these, uh, the testimonies and confessions, um, <clears throat> uh, the court records, and it says you didn't rape her, why, and why didn't you, John Saunders, just wondering. Well, I didn't rape her because I was gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even funny. <laughs> it's not even funny. I really hope they didn't. I I hope so. I I hope they didn't. But uh, nah, man, I like, didn't do it because yeah. I was gay. Like, how, <laughs> how would they really know? I I guess it, yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Some sources leave out the rape. Some mention mm-hmm. that they both raped her. Hopefully Some say not. that only Charles raped her. I can't Hopefully believe this guy had a uh, cob defense. I'm gay. Oh yeah, dude. We used to have a kid in our school in uh, eighth grade who would go through the hallway and just yell out, "I'm gay," <laughs> or he would go scapegoat bat. <laughs> this kid, yeah. we saw this kid get in a fight and then get power bombed on a tree stump. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> Coughed up blood. That's a awesome. little bit of blood, but yeah, yeah it's so blood. It's though. beautiful. Yeah. Like it's well, it was fucking hilarious. And I think he asked for it. I think he wanted power bombed on the stump, didn't he? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no. Well, in my mind, I kind of thought that he wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I remember one time, God, this is just bully stories now. Someone threw like his volleyball, basketball up in a tree and it got stuck. And he was like climbing the tree to get it back. And he got yelled at for climbing a tree. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Did that tree later become the stump tree? Maybe. <laughs> they cut it down because they climbed it. So they got power bombed on it. Welcome to detention. Yeah, full, full circle, buddy. <laughs> and the next day, Aline's mother looked all over for her, scared and not knowing what happened. Just the night before when she left for work, Aline was asleep in her bed. So she contacts the police to let them know what happened, but nothing. The police interviewed everyone that they could think of, including Charles Schmid, but once again, nothing. And six months after the murder, Charles decided to tell his friend Richard Bruns that he had murdered Aline. And then Richard Bruns, he's the one who would write the book, yeah. and his daughter is the one that did the interview. Gotcha. Dude, I'm imagining uh, Charles Schmid. Yep. I'm imagining him, like, burying her and, like, standing over the grave with the shovel, but since he's so short, the shovel looks like he's, like, one of them fucking, like, pole vaulter guys with, like, a fucking 13-foot <laughs> stick. Like, it's that big compared to him. He, he plants a flag like in the moon landing footage. <laughs> he he's so small that he has to like raise up the shovel and it looks like the Fukushima thing where they raise up the American flag. <laughs> Who's what's the friend's name? Oh, Richard Bruns. Every time he gets his stomach uh, stomach illness, he runs to everybody. He's like, "Hey, don't go in the bathroom, guys! I got the Bruns." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's not even funny. His favorite Rihanna lyric is, uh, we go Brunzes town tonight. <laughs> he was like an exceptional, uh, never mind. It <laughs> no, was gonna, you've intrigued no, us. It was going to be a hot cross Bruns joke. <laughs> 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 yeah, Richard Bruns, he would be the one that would later contact the police about Charles. And then he wrote the book, I, a squealer. That's what he titled it. Wait, no, I think it was like by that. his daughter. No, he wrote it. Like, as the trial was going on, and then he left it alone and just kept it in his attic, and his daughter found it 50 years later and then had it published. Did she find it when she was a baby? No. Oh, because I thought baby got brunts. (laughs) 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 Yeah, so his daughter's name was Lisa, I don't know how to pronounce it, Espich, Espich. It's not well. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, you shit. racist motherfuckers. Dude, that's both acceptable. It's, e- 
It's E S P I C H. A spitch. Oh, ESPN yeah. three. Yeah. ESPN yeah. the Ocho. Which but, which one do you think uh, her favorite uh, yeah. comedian would be? Carlos Mencia. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so she's the one who did the interview on the podcast I mentioned earlier. And here's a quote from her in regards to her father and his friendship with Smitty. I never quite understood what Charles Schmidt's draw to my dad was because my dad was so much younger, she said. But I could really get why my father was attracted to this friendship because Charles Schmidt was older. He had a nice car. He had a lot of friends. He had girls always hanging around and went to parties. That was before Charles Schmid started acting really bizarre and looking bizarre. At that time, he was just this charismatic and popular guy. So yeah, uh, Richard is three years younger than him. So it's a 20-year-old Smitty, and then Richard is 17. Wow. But yeah, them two, uh, Richard and Smidge, and Smidge, <laughs> bro, uh, Richard, these fucking names, Richard and Smitty, they end up becoming some pretty good friends. But after about, I think it's two or three years... They, like Smitty just starts losing it and getting weirder and weirder, and that's when Richard starts to kind of realize that shit is uh, starting to hit the fan. Lisa says, quote, It was really after the first girl was murdered that my father started noticing a difference in Charles Schmid. Charles, he had made a decision that he really wanted to see what it was like to kill somebody. So that's what he told him. So, and you may be thinking, like, if he told him, why didn't he contact the police right away or anything? And that's because... According to Lisa, her father didn't actually like fully believe the confession at first because, like we said, Smitty always told just ridiculous, untrue stories. Like he was a pathological liar. So, like we said, he would tell girls and people he had leukemia and like he didn't have long to live, and and he would use that to like even have sex with them and stuff. And he also told a story that when he was a baby, he had been put into a stretching machine <laughs> because he was stunted at birth. Oh my god. <laughs> Shit. Actually, no. In the '60s, that one sounds plausible. <laughs> what if, what if they had? Do you know about those uh, cone-shaped skulls? Cone-shaped skull. Yeah. Oh, the movie Coneheads. No, oh, Coneheads. There, so there were these. Well, okay. So people think they're aliens, but actually, there were these tribes that would like squash babies' heads in like oh, yeah. boards of wood. Yeah, they would put it on their forehead. Yeah, oh, yes, okay, yeah. I know what you're talking and about. they would make them grow to like have a cone-shaped head. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, what if Schmitty had that? Oh, <laughs> fuck yeah. Just repicture this whole story like that, but he's got like the Elvis hair on top of that. Oh my God, yeah. Nice, dude. dude, speaking of uh, what you mentioned earlier, the fucking daughter in Coneheads was hot as fuck. I can't remember who it was. I don't know either, but I remember watching it as a kid and like even being turned on by the Conehead girl. And here's another quote from her. There were all these stories he would tell that were over-the-top stories that my father knew weren't true. So when it came to him telling the story about Aline Rowe, it was hard to know if he was really being truthful or if he was just telling another story. So yeah, in his defense, he just didn't... This guy always fucking lies. Yeah. So he had no Why reason would to you actually... believe something like that? Yeah. 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 He did tell me when he was in school, he was an athlete and he could throw a football over the mountains. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> I believed him. Honestly... We have a friend, and I'm not going to say a name, but we have a friend that if they said that to us, I would be like, okay, he's fucking lying. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Now, just a few months later, while at a public swimming pool, Charles, he'd laid his eyes upon another girl that had uh, taken his interest. So he does what all of us would do here, and this is very hashtag wildman material right here. Uh, he follows her home. He knocks on her door, and then when she answers, he's like, hey, don't I know you? <laughs> What? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so he followed her home, like creeping in, like like peeking around buildings and hiding in bushes and shit, following her home, and then he runs up and knocks on the door and pulls that card. I mean, I guess this is like before where you could just kind of somehow steal her number and say it. <laughs> he like knocks on the door. He's like, hey, 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 I got fucking got leukemia. What are you going to do? <laughs> We're going to fucking do this or what? I seen you at the swimming pool. You know, I got leukemia. His dick's already out. He's like, come on, I got leukemia. Come on. Hey, come on, just touch just, it. Just touch it. Just touch it. Come, <laughs> come on. on. You, just touch it. <laughs> you, uh, hey, Bobby. Or Greg, you're hurting her, man. <laughs> oh, I love when you play at my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing with your ass. Ray. And the two would soon become romantically involved with one another. Mm -hmm. However, she would soon start to get on Charles's nerves. So Gretchen, the 17-year-old girl, she started to get a little too clingy for his liking. 
was she playing uh, right there too much for him? Or was she just getting a little, a little too <laughs> chingy for him? And a quote about Gretchen. Gretchen was a pretty, thin, nervous girl of 17 with a knack for trouble. A teacher described her as erratic, subversive, and a psychopathic liar. So, sounds like they uh, have some stuff in common. Hang on a second. Let me read my notes. You got that wrong. Uh, it, they described her as a psychopathic uh, killer clown. <laughs> <laughs> this lady's love is sexy smile. <laughs> In the night of August 11th, 1965, Charles strangled Gretchen to death, but he wasn't done there. He also decided, you know what? I better strangle her 13-year-old sister, yes. Wendy, also. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, because he's a piece of shit. In so. their house? No. Oh. I believe he did this at his home. Oh. Uh, I believe they told their parents or they told friends that they were going out to the drive-in that night, oh. and then they never returned back. So I believe it was at his house. But I don't know how he did it. I don't know. I know he strangled them both, but I don't know how he worked that out. If he like tied one up first or just made the younger one watch. I have no oh, idea the details sick. because but, he never like confesses to like anything really. Okay, I was about to ask. Like, I don't know if you like if later in this you're gonna talk about like a psychiatrist interviewing him or something like that. But like, I don't know if this is like a newer killer kind of thing or an older killer thing. But like. Don't they start off by like torturing animals and stuff, or like hunting and killing well, uh, animals? A first, lot of or? serial killers have similar qualities. Like a lot of them, they they piss the bed. Uh, okay. They start off hurting animals and then moving up. And a lot of them also had a traumatic like head injury when they were younger. Also, oh, well, like shit. definitely not all of them. No, no, not all yeah. of them. But say, like, it's it's common in a good amount of them. I say it's just so weird to like if you've ever thought about killing. What do you want to like? Like, oh, I'll kill a bunch of ants with this magnifying glass. Like, oh, that's fun. Maybe I'll kill a raccoon or something. Like, I'm going to kill a 17-year-old girl. Well, there is actually another story where just out of nowhere, he picked up his cat by the tail and just oh. fucking swung it into the wall a bunch of times. And then when Richard got, like, grossed out by it, he's like, what, you're sympathetic towards this? Oh. Or something. Like, he made a comment like that. I don't remember the exact words, but he's like, you're showing compassion to this cat. He, so like he was fucking going nuts. Like huh. he legit was just fucking losing it. He uh he grabs the cat by the tail and like the Hulk and Loki in the first Avengers, he just smacks it on the floor oh, back and Jesus. forth. <laughs> I I thought you were gonna make a Trump joke there. Oh, grabs the cat. Grabs uh, by the, you know, I okay. for my opening, I was trying to think of a joke where it's gonna be that I'm at the gym with like my mom or my dad or no, I'm I'm at the gym with my mom. And then that was right at the same time where Trump makes the grab him by the pussy comment in the locker room. And the guy he tells that to walks out and just grabs me and kidnaps me. <laughs> <laughs> so, But I couldn't think of how to make that a good joke. <laughs> I thought you were good. <laughs> but it's your mom. I'll say it about me. So, like, I'll I saw say it about it, Jeremiah. I saw you and your mom at the gym. So, uh, you know, how, like on the, the leg extensions things. Yeah. Well, I taped your mom's boobs to my ankles okay. and I sat on her shoulders and then started lifting up for leg extensions. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, it. Uh, that's, that's fucking that's, it, man. Hey, that's all you need, baby. Uh, that is it. Napa know-how. This month, get a five-quart jug of Napa full synthetic motor oil plus a Napa platinum oil filter for twenty one ninety eight. That's a pretty unbelievable deal. But trust us, it's totally real, but only for a limited time. So get Napa Full Synthetic and a Napa Platinum Oil Filter for $21.98 today. Quality parts, helpful people. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. General States pricing. Sales prices do not include applicable state local taxes or recycling fees. Offer ends 4 30 19. So, a little bit about Gretchen. She was the daughter of a prominent heart surgeon in Tucson, as well as a leader in the community. So her family definitely had some, uh, some pretty high connections, and she was very wealthy. And it was also believed that Charles had told Gretchen about his previous murder, and after, when Charles would later on think about breaking up with her for being like too clingy, she would bring up the murder and pretty much would threaten him with it and like almost try to blackmail him. And unfortunately, this would be what most likely led to the murder of her. And there was one story where supposedly uh, Smitty actually took her out to where he buried Aileen and like showed her. Oh Jesus! So I don't know if that's true or not, but supposedly he did. And also he there's a possible another murder that I don't know any details about, or even if it's true. But supposedly he did mention another murder to her possibly as well. But yeah, they were um, 
and she still was like stayed with them and said she loved them and stuff, but she got too clingy. So anytime you'd try to break up with her or threaten it, she'd be like, well, then I would hate to have to tell the police about the, the murder and stuff like that. So I'm guessing that's why he killed her. As to why he killed her younger sister, uh, we have no idea. Like, who knows why the fuck he, he killed her, too? You know, honestly, if he tried to kill Charles Schmidt, it'd actually be pretty easy. Since he's so short, fuck, you can probably bury him at a golf course. I mean, there's 18 spots to choose from. Because <laughs> <laughs> he could fit in a hole. Uh, yeah. That was a cute one. That was a cute joke. All right, good. I Thank like you. that. <laughs> And here's a quote from Richard Bruns on Charles and Gretchen's relationship. He and Gretchen were always fighting. She didn't want him to drink or go out with the guys or go out with other girls. She wanted him to stay home, call her on the phone, be punctual. First, she would get suspicious of him. Then he'd get suspicious of her. They were made for each other. So they had this pretty chaotic relationship. One excerpt from the article in Life mentioned them fighting and arguing and like Charles being like, you know, I fucking love you, baby. <laughs> and then a minute later, he'd be like, you fucking whore. <laughs> so they were always like very chaotic. No. About a week after Gretchen disappeared, Bruns was at Smitty's house. Quote, we were sitting in the living room, he recalls. He was sitting on the sofa and I was in the chair by the window and we got on the subject of Gretchen and he said, you know, I killed her. I I said I didn't, and he said, you know where? And I said no. He said, I did it here in the living room. First, I killed Gretchen. Then Wendy was still going, huh, huh, huh. So, and then in parentheses, Bruns shows how Smitty made like the, some sort of gesture. I don't really know if he did like a choking gesture or. Then I took the bodies and put them in the trunk of the car. I put the bodies in the most obvious place I could think of because I just didn't care anymore. Then I ditched the car and wiped it clean. I was going to say he did the NWO Wolfpack. I spray painted her. (laughs) That. (laughs) Wait. So when he was telling him about the sister, he's like, the sister went, huh, huh, huh. Was that supposed to be like an Elvis thing? Like no, the, I, don't, I don't know what it, yeah, what it meant. It's hard to oh, okay. read and find out what it meant. Uh, okay. I feel like he's imitating her crying. Yeah, that's what uh, I would have guessed. Huh, huh, huh. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like he killed her in front of her sister and then killed her. And once again, Richard, he wasn't too bothered by this admission because he didn't really 100% believe him. He still had no proof or evidence that he did these things, so he kind of just went with it. However, something would soon happen that would lead Bruns to believe that maybe his friend Charles Smitty had been telling the truth all along. Also, how bad is it that you're such a fucking bad liar and known liar that you admitted to killing people and people are like, no, you did. Come on, man. <laughs> and and like, I, I've killed people. No, no, you didn't. And, and I also remember reading or hearing, I don't remember if they mentioned this in the interview, if I read this in the article, but in Tucson during this time, there were a lot of runaways. Like a lot of teenagers ran away. So whenever people went missing and stuff, a lot of them just assumed they ran off. Oh, okay. Hmm. So soon after that night, I'm not quite exactly sure how long after. It wasn't too far, though. There were a couple of men in nice sharp suits smoking cigars, and they drove by and picked Bruns and Smitty up so they could have a little talk with them. And the two men then told Smitty and Bruns that they were part of the mafia and that they were hired to look for Gretchen. So they next took them to an apartment with a bunch of other mob guys inside waiting. And the men inside, they didn't make any actual threats at them, but they made sure they got their message across and that they definitely were going to scare them enough. But the two swore up and down they didn't know what happened, and Charles said that he thinks the girls ran away to California. After leaving and getting back to Smitty's house, Charles was actually scared enough that he called the FBI to let them know that the mafia was harassing him over the disappearance of the two girls. So I read that on some sources. Some didn't mention that. So if that is true, then even though he murdered those girls, he was scared enough to call the FBI to be like, hey, the mafia is fucking harassing me over these girls. Yeah. And since Bruns was scared as hell because he had the mafia and FBI involved now, he didn't want to get in trouble for knowing that Charles had really done this. So he wants to try and and figure out if he's telling the truth or not. And he remembers that Charles mentioned that he just left the bodies out there in the desert. So he's like, well, fuck, if if he just left them out there, then anyone can just find them. And if they find them, then they're going to come after us. So he tells Smitty that we need to go out there and bury them. And here's another quote from the article. So we parked the car and got the shovel and walked down there, and we couldn't find anything. 
Then Smitty said, wait, I smell something. We went in opposite directions looking, and then I heard Smitty say, come here. And I found him kneeling over Gretchen. There was a white rag tied around her legs. Her blouse was pulled up, and she was wearing a white bra and capris. Then he said, Wendy's up this way. I sat there for a minute, and then I followed Smitty to where Wendy was. He'd had the decency to cover her except for one leg, which was sticking up out of the ground. We tried to dig with a flat shovel. We each took turns. He'd dig for a while, and then I'd dig for a while, but the ground was hard and we couldn't get anywhere with that flat shovel. We dug for 20 minutes, and finally Smitty said we better do something because it's going to get light. So he grabbed the rag that was around Gretchen's legs and dragged her down in the wash. It made a noise like dragging a hollow shell. It stunk like hell. Then Smitty said wipe off her shoes, there might be fingerprints. So I wiped them off with the handkerchief and threw it away. We went back to Wendy. Her leg was sticking up with a shoe on it. He said take off her tennis shoes and throw it over there. I did. I threw it. Now you're in this as deep as I am. By then, the, si the sisters had been missing for about two weeks. And according to uh, Bruns' daughter, she said that he wasn't convinced he was telling the truth until they actually did find the bodies. Yeah. So when he said, let's go find him and bury him. He thought he was going to be lying. That was actually his way to try to figure out if he was telling the truth or not. Yeah, absolutely. But this is a that fucking scary image. Like these two guys are out in the middle of the night trying to find these dead bodies, trying to find two dead teenage girls. That's fucking so creepy. I'm sorry, yeah, Spence, what were you saying? Imagine being the one who didn't even know if it was real and then seeing that. And they, oh, I guess it is real. Yeah. And it's in the middle of the night, and he fucking smells it first. It, oh, wow. it sucks because uh, Richard's young enough to where he just he helped his friend, but honestly, he probably shouldn't have. But yeah. then what, what do you do? Like, I mean, because you never know if he's going to kill you, too. And he didn't have a choice because when they went out there, Charles said, because uh, Richard was like, oh, my God, what the fuck is that smell? And Charles quickly and intelligently followed up with whoever smelt it, dealt it. You did the murders, Richard. <laughs> and there was police and, nearby, yeah. and they said, yes, you did. That's le they, that's legal. That's they binding. They got him, yeah. yeah. Well, throwback to Tim's joke. They uh, they were following it by the stink, but they just ran into Amy Schumer, and she was talking about her pussy. Oh, <laughs> the next day, Smitty was picked up to ride out to California with the mafia guys to look for Gretchen. So they like the next day they're like, Oh, you said she's in California. Well, let's go fucking find her then. So that's kind of badass. I'm yeah. glad the mafia Hashtag are gonna well, do man. something. But while in California in San Diego, supposedly he gets picked up by the police on a complaint that he was impersonating an FBI agent and he was held briefly and then they returned him back to Tucson. I only saw that in like one source. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, that is kind of funny. Yeah, for sure. And right after this, this is when Richard is like, okay, we found the bodies. So I, I know he's telling the truth now. And Smit, Smitty has just completely fucking lost it. Like he said that when they were back at his house, this is what he said to him. I've killed not three times, but four. Now it's your turn, Richie. And then he just started going fucking crazy and like punching his fist through the walls, destroying the inside of his house. And... He would just run around like they said he got in his underwear and ran out in the middle of the street at night yelling, God is going to punish me. And then out of nowhere, right after that, he meets a 15 year old girl and fucking marries her. Oh, Whoa. What the fuck? And it was, did he join the army? First? And this thing is like even his friends didn't fucking know who that girl was. And like he hangs out with like a lot of young girls. And and you would think that at least Richard or someone would fucking know who it was. Yeah. They didn't even know who she was. What the fuck? So shit's hitting the fan, and things are getting even crazier for uh, for the both of them. I don't know why, at this point, Richard didn't call the police. I don't know if he was scared that Charles would kill him or what, but you think he would. Or maybe he was scared because he helped bury the yeah, bodies. Yeah, so he probably thought he would like somehow be like, I mean, because technically he was involved. I mean, he yeah. didn't kill him, but he helped hide it. Wait, this is all starting to become part of an ICP song. Yeah. Oh, Richie! I didn't mean to kill him. I didn't mean to kill him. <laughs> so next, Bruns, he starts dating this girl named Kathy. But one thing about Kathy is she was one of Smitty's ex-girlfriends. So why the okay. fuck would you start dating her? Yeah. And then Bruns, he becomes insanely 
obsessed with the fact that he's like, oh shit, she, Kathy, is going to be Smitty's next target. I just have a feeling that he's going to kill her next. How about the girl you're fucking dating now? That is her. Oh, wait, I thought you meant the 15-year-old. Oh, okay. No. Oh, okay. No, the guy, the girl that he's dating now is an ex-girlfriend of Smitty's. Oh, okay. So he's like, well, fuck, he, he knows, like, he's going to kill her. He, he, that's what he's going to do. So he became obsessed with the notion that Ka- that Kathy was the next victim on Smitty's list. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. And Kathy was like, you know, someone had cut out the screen door. And there'd been a prowler around the house at night. And I've been hearing noises like someone's been trying to break in. And Smitty is like, I fucking... Or uh, Bruns is like, I fucking know it was Smitty. I know it's him that's doing this. Yeah. So he started just fucking hanging out at her house like the entire day. Like he was like hanging out in trees and shit watching her property. Oh, fuck yeah. Like becoming super obsessed with protecting her. But to her and her family, they're like the only... Crazy yeah. motherfucker we yeah. see hanging around is you. Which and, sucks because he probably was he was actually trying to help. Yeah, yeah. He like tried <laughs> doing a watch party, so he parked a van like twenty feet away from the house and faced the oh, house. Yeah, just the old people. <laughs> yeah, that one thing. Uh, yeah. But he said he started having this dream and his quote it was the same dream every night. Smitty would have Kathy out in the desert and he'd be doing all these things to her. She would be strangling her and then I'd be running across the desert with a gun in my hand, but I could never get there in time. So he said he was having that dream like every night. Yeah. So he's spending all of his all of his hours in the day just camping outside her house, being like, I'm not fucking letting Smitty get anywhere near her. But the family, they didn't see this. They didn't see that he's trying to protect her because he got so nutty about it. They were just like, all right, dude, you got to fucking leave because you are the only weirdo that's stalking this family right now. And Bruns, he would like, he would camp out like in the alley or in the side streets. He would patrol down the sidewalks from like morning till late at night. And he was doing this every single day. Anytime Kathy's home, she'd be there. If she went out somewhere, he would follow her. And her dad is like always calling the police. And he'd be like, man, Bruns is fucking out here again. Um, he would like walk his dog. He would do anything he can to go out of his way to watch their house. But eventually in the end of October, he got arrested for harassing the family. (laughs) And the judge is like, you know what? You have to leave town. Like the only way I'm not throwing you in jail is if you just get out of town and you have to get over this. So he agreed that he would move back to where he originally came from, Ohio. Oh, O-H. O-H. He would go stay with his grandmother in Columbus. Hang on, Sloopy, Sloopy, hang on. (laughs) O-H-I-O. Yeah, so he would would go stay with his grandmother in, uh, in Columbus. He said he couldn't sleep at night. Because he was always having that fucking recurring nightmare over and over again. And now he's not there to protect her. So he was getting like real scared. Like he became insane over it. He became obsessed with it. I thought you were going to say he couldn't sleep because he was an Indians fan in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> uh, neither could I, buddy. I know. Neither could. Uh... You know what pissed me off about the Indians then? Living in Orlando. Throughout the whole year, you don't see anyone in Indian shit. Yeah. Then as soon as it came to World fucking, Series, I went out like downtown Orlando, and everyone is in yeah. Indians gear. Fuck and shit. you guys. You know what shit I've been through as an Indians yeah. fan, man. The only real, the only way you know there's real Ohio fans in Florida is when you see them wearing Buckeye stuff because yeah. everyone there fucking hates the Buckeyes, dude. Okay. See, the mess of things, I I've loved all Cleveland sports my whole life. You know, I mean. I don't get as much into football where I care about the rivalries and stuff like that, but I really never got into the Buckeyes. I like them. Yeah, I know a lot of people prefer college football over. Yeah. and I mean, I, I love football, but I absolutely hate the fucking NFL. And you love Johnny football. Johnny football is the only one I care about. Who, you know what? <laughs> if, you, if you're if you listening since, you know, he, he since might be. you're a free agent, actually, you're actually, not actually, uh, dude, can we, can he's we, out of job again. He, dude, he might not even have Wi-Fi at this point, though. So in regards to uh, to Richard living in Columbus, one time he said that he decided to tell his grandmother like the entire story, and she thought that, well, he's drunk, so he's not really telling the truth or he's exaggerating. 
But she said, I hear beer does strange things to a person. That's what she said, c- trying to comfort him. Because he was drunk, like, telling all this stuff. I mean, I wouldn't fucking believe this if someone came and told me all this stuff about his yeah. friend murdering yeah. all these people and stuff. I guess, yeah. And that's when he exploded. He got super pissed off and, like, threw a chair. And he said, the one time in my life when I need advice and what do I get? And then he said, uh... No, I was gonna do the I don't want your life, but I, I couldn't remember the life. Life. playing football at. <laughs> oh my god, what is that even from? Uh, okay. Varsity Blues. Oh, okay. Let me look it up real quick so I, I can get it right. Your life, or it could be uh, not another team movie. It depends on which one you're going uh, for. Okay. Playing football at West Canaan may have been the opportunity of your lifetime, but I don't want your life. And then after he had that little breakdown, he gets on the phone with the Tucson police and tells them everything. So he finally is like, you know what? I'm I'm tired of 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 not telling the police. I'm tired of hiding and running. Yeah. So he calls the police and tells them about the murders. But then, of course, the question gets brought up: Well, why the fuck did you wait so long? But like we mentioned, he could have been scared, or or who knows? I mean, we know he didn't actually believe him until the very end. And it's kind of shitty to think about that. Like, what ifs? Like, what if he would have contacted him after the first murder? Then maybe the sisters would be alive. Yeah. But, I mean, even the police interviewed him after both murders. Like, he interviewed uh, Smitty after both of them, and the police didn't see anything about it. So, And then after, he contacted the police, and he was like, he told him, like, Smitty's going to kill Kathy next. The police would go pick up Kathy and put her in protective custody. And then they would go out to the desert where uh, Bruns had told them that the bodies were, were buried. And they found the grisly and decaying remains of Gretchen and Wendy. That's a, a refreshing take for these stories where they freaking never find the bodies a bunch of times. At least they get the fucking closure. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that is that is a, a good thing. I mean, it's it's such a tragic story, but yeah, at least they do get some closure out of it. Hey, and yeah. Could you repeat that last sentence? They went into the desert and discovered the grisly, decaying remains of Gretchen and Wendy. Ah, the grizzly remains. So they must have found Timothy Treadwell's. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. And whenever the police went to go arrest Smitty, they found him outside working outside in the yard. And he had his cowboy boots on and he was all made up in his fucking goofy ass ways. And this is where the picture is taken in the book where they empty out his cowboy boots and show all the shit inside it. So everyone listening, if you want to just like Google that, I'm going to show the guys here what it looks like because it's pretty funny. And then a week later, they would arrest John Saunders and Mary French. And John Saunders and Mary, they confessed immediately to their roles in the slaying of Aline Rowe. And they were quickly sentenced. And I believe they sentenced them first, so that way they could use them in the trial against uh, Smitty. But Mary French, she was, I think, sentenced to four to five years. Because she, she got Aline to go out that night knowing they were gonna um, kill her i feel like she should have gotten more than that yeah absolutely S- saunders he got life in prison how the fuck wait for what because he possibly raped her oh and fuck kill. their mind yeah that's yeah true. that guy yeah. yeah no i was thinking of a different guy okay that, i know you yeah. think of the 17 year old i yeah. know you uh you said i, was, I just I mean, got life in prison did i mention i didn't do it because i was gay i mean he, he <laughs> deserved it but i feel like she should have gotten at least like like 15 to 20 or i don't something. i don't know if maybe she got a deal because she's going to be a witness against smitty or not i don't know how she only got five but, years but the only reason that girl was there was because of her yeah, that's true. So, like, I feel like she should have gotten the same thing as them. But, like I said, I think that's the only reason I could see her is yeah, if she made a deal to yeah. speak against them. Yeah, they, yeah, they killed her. What if uh, this is so long ago that when he's like, I'm gay, like, no one really thought, like, gay is homosexual. They thought, like, gay is happy. So, he's like, I'm gay. I'm like, oh, it's your happy murderer? Life in prison. Yeah, wow, that's pretty fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, whenever the actual case came to trial, Smitty's defense is... He's like, no, Brun- Richard Bruns did all this. He's trying to blame it on me. Good. That was their yeah. defense. Good Holy man. Shit. Good call, buddy. And in the book, uh, Richard talks about like how hard it was for him to do this because when he went to the police station and they brought Smitty in, they had them both sit down in the same room. Oh, fuck. What? And so like, they had to like like give the story. Like First, uh, Bruns, he gave his uh, his story where he's saying everything that happened. 
and they recorded him telling all that, like the his the confession that being like, well, Smitty did this, and I helped him with this and stuff. And then they brought in Smitty to listen to it, and then they had to sit in like the same room oh. together. And he said he just fucking stared at him, and like it upset him so much. Like he said that was like one of the hardest things was looking at at Smitty while he yeah. What if that would like, fuck you up? It would be it'd be weird. Yeah, because I mean, he's still consider him as a friend, even though he's fucked up. Well, and he was also afraid that he was gonna fucking have him killed because yeah. he is the Pied Piper, and he had like a big following of like younger people, and it was believed that people might have actually had been gonna go after Bruns and kill him. Wow. So, what if it's like the Skyrim meme, where it's uh they're like uh so Brunson says that you did it, or Bruns said that you did it. No, I didn't. He did it. And that's like Deception 100. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, Smitty's defense. He do- he pleads not guilty and said that it was uh, Richard Bruns that did it, who's trying to pin it on him. But in 1966, Schmid, he was found guilty of a murder and sentenced to death. However, the state of Arizona soon abolished the death penalty temporarily in 1971. So instead of the death penalty, he was charged to 50 years in prison. So he would, I believed he got life in prison for one of the murders. And then because the death sentence was abolished, they turned that to 50 years to life. So regardless, he's in prison forever. Yeah. What if they just took away the death sentence just for a little bit, but it was reinstated because of him? They're like, you know, we can't give you the death penalty, so uh, we're going to have to subject you to 50 years of uh, watching Mind of Mencia reruns. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'll just take the death penalty, please. <laughs> <laughs> and Dude, honestly, though, which one, I might might take the death penalty over that, honestly. Yeah. I don't get this part. This happens a couple years later. It, it really, I can't wrap my mind around it. doesn't make any sense. But Smitty like starts telling him, he's like, yeah, the prosecution story's all wrong, where they said that he beat Aline over the head with a rock and killed her. And they didn't know where her body was yet. They only knew where the two sisters were. So he's like, I'll tell you where the body is just so you can get her body and look at her skull and see that there's no fracture. Because if I would have beaten her over the head with a rock, there'd be a skull fracture. And he's like, and I want to prove that the prosecution got their story wrong. And they go find the body. He goes with them to find the body. And she has a skull fracture. So what the fuck fuck was he trying to prove? What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he thought maybe she wouldn't have, but yeah, they're like, yeah, well, it looks she has a fracture in her skull. Beat her fucking head in. So I don't know what the point of that was. (laughs) I have no idea why he did that. That was that just him being a pathological liar again? Uh, And it was like three, three or four years later. So I don't know if maybe he convinced himself. Did he? Did he think the skull would heal after you fucking killed her? You idiot. The thing is, he's already in there for the other two girls also, so it wouldn't have changed a single thing. Yeah. What a moron. So while in prison, he has many failed prison escape attempts, but he actually does manage to escape once. Wow. November 11th, 1965, him and Raymond Hudgens, who was another uh, murderer, I think he killed three people, well, they escaped prison and they went to a nearby ranch and they held, I believe, four hostages there. And then... They soon, I believe they let the hostages go right after, and then the two of them separated, and then they both got recaptured and <laughs> returned to prison, Fuck which yes. he didn't even make it out of Tucson, I don't think. In the early 1970s, he became an interested in poetry. He, uh, Smitty even changed his name to Paul David Ashley, and he turned to writing music and essays and uh, became a little artsy. And he sent his work from prison to a professor at the University of Arizona. And uh, the professor said, quote, For all the wrong reasons, I critiqued his work and and discovered that he was actually quite talented. We'll see how long that lasts, though. Um, On March 10th, 1975, Smitty... He was uh, starting to like sh- to like strut around the prison as if he was like better than everyone else now. And uh, two of the other inmates got fed up with it and they beat him up. And they beat him up pretty bad actually because Smitty was found stabbed and lying in a pool of his own blood. Fuck he yes. had a wound on the right side of his chest and also he lost an eye. And oh, yes. I think one of yeah. his kidneys fucking failed on him too. Good. And he had anywhere between 20 and 50 stabs. So some know. sources say 47, some say like 20 some. So yeah, he got absolutely fucking destroyed, which he's 5'3". I'm sure he didn't need two of you to hold this fucker down. Yeah, might as well just uh, do it though. 
And then <laughs> March 30th, 1975, while still in the hospital, uh, his little one-eyed ass died. Fuck yes. Yeah. What do they use for a casket? Uh, wasn't it a shoebox? <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, I, was, I had two jokes ready. It was Shaq's shoebox. Or it's going to be like those old hampers that we all have from like the 70s. <laughs> it's weird though. They saw like like right before he died, like he was like writing his palms and stuff like that. And um, he started signing the poems by like the name he wanted to be changed to next. It was a uh, Meta World Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the good thing, though, is that after his funeral, uh, Mr. Noodle in the Green Mile was able to use that box to bury his mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I only saw this little bit mentioned. I don't know the details of it, but temporarily, someone stole his body from the morgue. I don't oh, know what yeah, happened dude. with it or oh, anything. Oh, I hope some shit happened with that. But his his mother asked for him to be buried at the prison cemetery. She's like, if you bury him somewhere else, then people are just going to fuck up the tombstone and desecrate it and stuff, which, I mean, that is true, but who gives a shit? What I, if, just, got, I if, just got deja vu. Was, has that happened before in one of our episodes? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's happened before where they, the, they asked them to be buried at the prison cemetery. Maybe. I think it might have. And if you've ever heard of the short story, Where Are You Going? Where Have You Been? That was written by Joyce Carol Oates, and that was published in 1966, and it was based on the tale of Charles Schmid. But yeah, that is uh, everything we have on this case. We did uh, cut out a lot of stuff in regards to the trial and everything. I didn't want this episode to be like too crazy long, but uh, yeah, that was a guy I've never heard of. Lucky for us, our Patreon uh, supporter, Liz, she brought this up to us, and uh, yeah, definitely interesting. I can't believe I've never heard of this guy. Yeah, I've never heard of him. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I know, dude. What a yeah, piece yeah. of shit. Shout out to our wild woman. Thanks, Liz, for leaking that one to us. That's right. <laughs> it's a pee joke. <laughs> leaking it to us. Liz. Trickling Liz. it on down. Oh, Jeremiah, you shut your goddamn mouth. Mm. How dare you? Apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he just animorphed into a bullfrog there, I think. <laughs> Sorry. Lizard breath. <laughs> Anything? Oh, speaking of lizard, uh, when I was dating this girl, she used to get. I as a joke one day, I said that uh, my name when I was in a band, I said my name was Lizard Boy, and she was like, "Oh my god, that's stupid! Tell me that's not true." I was like, "Yeah, that's true." So at every show, uh, Dan, this guy I was in the band with, he would announce me as Lizard Boy on <laughs> bass, <laughs> and on bass, Lizard Boy. So, alrighty, I do have a Patreon shout out to do right now. Nice. So, if you uh, sign up for our Patreon, it's either one or five dollars a month. We got some pretty good cases on there, and we're going to be recording one tonight on Ian Watkins, the lead singer of the Lost Prophets. And this is a fucked up one. So, if you want to hear that, and if you want to hear the story of my murderer uncle, as well as a bunch of tooth stories and everything, sign up for our Patreon. You get it. You get some uh, bonus shit, and I'll mail you some stickers. Wait, you're not going to tell them about the uh, super secret elite and Patreon this, level? No, I didn't tell them about that. Oh, if they donate five hundred thousand dollars a month. Mm. <laughs> yeah, if you donate five hundred thousand dollars a month, you become an elite member where we will probably fucking literally do anything you want. Yeah, well, well hopefully we can get Trump to do it, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's all <laughs> yeah. we can do. So our Patreon shout out goes to Nicole Johnson. She signed up. Thank you very much for signing up for our Patreon. Uh, get the shout out five dollars a month. Fuck yeah, Nicole. By the time you hear this, the stickers will be mailed out to you. I and hope she has twins. And she shampoos them frequently. Johnson and Johnson. Oh, All right. Oh, I like it. And also, uh, Haley Porter, she upgraded to $5 a month. So thank you very much, Haley Porter. Well, we must owe her a porter. That is right. Yeah. I always, I mentioned it last time where I cracked that awful joke where you guys didn't laugh at all. Never happens. So where I said, uh, next up on Patreon, my favorite beer, Haley Porter, and it was dead fucking silent. (laughs) If I would have heard it. I was like, well, you know. Good. But yeah. She's like the little lucky comet that flew above me. Aw, Jeremiah, that's nice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> especially considering what I just said earlier I'm more a fan of Haley Appletini <laughs> hey I'll have a Appletini and she'll have the girliest drink alright two Appletinis coming up yeah. alright so anything before Spence does our clothes and shit alright listeners here's let me level with you we fucking love you guys you are why this podcast exists we want to thank you for listening 
And if you would like to help the podcast, if you'd like to spread the little podcast dandelion seeds across into all your neighbor's yards, mm-hmm. it would be great if you would share this on social media. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't know. You can at least find Kevin on all of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of those we have official profiles. There's even a YouTube channel. There's two of them, isn't there? There's the old one. There's the second one you started. Yeah, I haven't done any of that, though. I was There was a while where I was uploading each episode and video. It just became too much for me. Okay, here's a deal. If anybody writes in and says they would like this, I will write a program, because I'm a programmer, that will automatically make just a video for each episode that's just the logo and a video. That'd be awesome. And upload them to the original channel. And have it all like the same one that's got Chili Cartel and all the old stuff and shit. That would be super cool, Spence. So somebody has to write in and request that, and then I'll do it. All right. See if you're listening. See if you see if you uh, stayed for like the after credits part of the Marvel movie that this <laughs> is. What else? What else? Oh, reviews. Reviews help us uh, gain visibility. We would love to get into like the the triple digits of podcasts. Uh, of comedy podcasts in the U.S. on iTunes. Right now, we're like a 1,000 and something. So we're close to 999. See if you can boost us up over that. Um, if you got an iTunes account, you know, just download the, each episode like 500 times. <laughs> we do have some milestones, too. Um, if we become uh, the 666th ranked podcast our eyes glow red our, we'll get red contacts make our eyes glow red we'll yeah. probably sacrifice andrew yeah um if you make us the 69th ranked oh. podcast Whoa. you specifically get to pick which members of the podcast 69 each other Man. in a live stream yeah I actually mean- that reminds me shout out to raven after my uh, mormon story uh, she made a funny picture where it's the Book of Mormon, and then me and Tim dressed up as missionaries, and it says missionary position, yeah. and it's just me and Tim fucking in a yeah. bunch of positions. And it's so fucking funny. Like at first when I saw it, I was like, "When, when do we?" Do that? I was, I was like, I was like, for one, where where was she filming from? And then I was like, "Oh fuck, it wasn't that day in my house." <laughs> and as far as the iTunes reviews go. There was like a, a time in June where somehow we hit like 400. So I thought that's where we were. Yeah. But yeah, I was super wrong. So from now on, because I have like a, a bunch of goals and milestones written down, each time we uh, we get past a certain number, I'll let you guys know, uh, we were right outside of 1,000. So if we break each 100 that we break, I'll let you guys know whenever we do. But I mean, we usually pop in for a day within 1,000 and then we drop out. Also, India... I saw whenever we were like 118, fuck yeah. we had seven downloads. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. So seven dude. downloads got Hell us yeah. also the top 100 in India. <laughs> so They're just not a funny Thanks, people guys. there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're like, what is... Uh, never mind, I'm not going to do a racist Indian voice. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's like the one that's still okay to do. It's still kind of okay yeah. to do the Indian voice. As thing. long as I think The Simpsons is on air, it should yeah. be all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, Once they're, that's gone. They've been doing it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> um oh and of course the the holy grail choose wisely and choose to be a patreon supporter <laughs> for just a dollar a month you get all of our bonus content and kevin will send you fucking stickers mm-hmm. S- lick them and stick them um don't forget to list the other two ranks too there's also a five dollar a month rank five hundred thousand and uh and a five hundred thousand dollar a month rank What's at the $5 rank? The only difference is, because I wanted everyone to get everything for dirt cheap. Yeah. If you want to help us out a little bit more, you can do $5, and that just gets you a shout out. That's the only difference. If you want your name to be like a piece of permanent historical record. The aggro crag. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's basically just like that. Well, what do they get the five hundred thousand dollar level, Kevin? I, I oh heard. shit! You'll get their name tattooed on you. Fuck, yeah. that's awesome, dude. dude like, fuck, dude! If somebody fucking gives us five hundred thousand dollars, I will tattoo their name on my face. But also, oh. I think the uh, <laughs> all right. You know what? Fuck it. I think the only person that has done the five hundred thousand is Weezy and Ed. <laughs> <laughs> and so. speaking of, I was gonna also mention if someone does five hundred thousand, I would get their name tattooed on my dick. So thank God it's Ed, and I got half of his name on there. <laughs> so. That's all that would fit. Yeah. And it's just D. Yeah. I I got the E. So, I mean. Yeah, we, we put we, our wieners yeah, together. We, hey, when, when our powers combine, it becomes Ed. <laughs> hey. So, not Captain Planet, Plan, it's just Ed. Again with the Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. 
Patreon. It's good shit. It's kind of like, uh, you know, those memorials they have with like all the names of soldiers. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. That's basically God. the kind of glory that you will get. Because <laughs> once you join the brothers, you become a POW. Oh. I think if you listen to at least 100 episodes of our show, they give you a purple heart for bravery. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Andrew is now. He got that and fucking peaced out. Andrew made it 10 episodes, so we gave him a purple nurple. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and uh, special thanks to everyone that has already left us a review. That really helps us out and means a lot to us, and thank you to everyone that's sharing the podcast with their friends. Yeah, if we could keep spreading this thing, that would be awesome. We really want to... Uh, Really want the name and the show to get out there. We know it's not for everyone, but there's a lot of people that are fucked up like us that enjoy mixing crime and comedy. And also, thank you to everyone that signed up for our Patreon. Like we said, it's just $1 or $5 a month. We got a lot of good bonus episodes on there, and we are going to be recording an extremely interesting and fucked up one tonight on Ian Watkins, the lead singer of Lost Profits. So if you want to hear that episode, sign up for the Patreon. And we also have a thread list. I forget the actual link, but I usually post it in our episode information. If you want to buy some shirts or whatever else you want, there's a lot of shit on there. And then July 13th, we will be at the True Crime Podcast Festival in Chicago. Hell yes. There's going to be a lot of awesome podcasts there, a lot of big name podcasts that are pretty cool. And there's just going to be us. So no one's going to know who we are. But we're going to bring a couple things of merchandise with us, maybe some shirts or something cool. So if you know who we are, come say hey, and we'll give you something. Um, get you. Yeah, we might record a bonus episode if we have a fan. I don't know. Maybe we'll let you say hi or say something on it. Something cool. I don't know. I want to do something cool for That'd you. That'd be awesome to do for sure. Yeah. We could do what Axl Rose did where um, I think it was Rocket Queen where he banged the drummer, Steven Adler's ex-girlfriend, in the recording studio. So you can hear that on the track. If one of you wants to bang us, we'll record it in the hotel room floor and send it to Andrew. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. These are all things we would do. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to our official hype man for the podcast, hashtag John the Wild Man from Queens. He is our official hype man. He, uh, if you got any problems, any problems whatsoever, you can take it up with him. Let's go ahead and just uh, give you a little clip of what our man's capable of right here. He's a better hype man than the guy from A Knight's Tale. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's, uh, that is high praise. Now a word from your sponsor, John, the wild man from Queens. Listen to the Brothers Commonplace, rate five stars on iTunes and all podcatchers, or I will personally come to your house with a baseball bat and break your fucking knees in. How about them apples? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you don't want that to happen, I think you know what to do. Hashtag, how about them apples, baby? Uh, but yeah, thank you, John. Uh, wild man from Queens. He's got our back, dude. That's fucking badass. Hashtag wild man. And, uh... Yeah, all of our awesome other listeners. Sorry, I haven't mentioned. It's so hard. Like we have so many awesome listeners that I consider friends of the show. It's just, it's unbelievable, man. It's, it's, it's so cool. So thank you, everyone that reaches out to us and keeps in touch and has just been super cool to us. I mean, we don't deserve that. You guys are amazing. So thank you. You yep. make this all worth it. I would like to think that us mentioning them helps them get laid, but honestly, that might just decrease their chances. And and really, we all know why Man from Queens is getting laid, and we know fucking Daniel's getting laid. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, really, we don't we don't even have to try. Between both of them, you yeah. know, pass yeah. us some seconds. Yeah, I would say I don't think you know? I don't think there's any more girls in the world. They're no. they're they're slaying so much trim. Yeah. What's that like? You know, yeah. what's tri I think, like most of my uh, most of my dates, whenever I do get to uh, you know I'm what do the kids call it? nookie? Whenever I'm about <laughs> to get that nookie, it usually ends with me going, huh. So that's what that looks like. <laughs> and uh, then I usually end up jacking it. Yeah, my mom always tells me like about how it, how it was afterwards. And about, but she watched, She doesn't leave when I jack it. I pull a Louis <laughs> Seek. Uh, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you know where I was going with it. But. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, All right, Toof. You weren't here last week, man. The people, they're every, the entire world is less wise. You're goddamn right I got some words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Oh. Fucking hit us with it, baby. What a lead. I spent all my fucking money with fucking Andrew. We opened up a fucking pastry and coffee shop because this fucker wanted to start a franchise. Motherfucker, all he wants to do is just fucking put make flour, put it on our fucking nuts, and serve it to people with coffee. <laughs> but he made it basketball themed. So they stand underneath a fucking hoop and we have to slam it on him. He called it Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite, my favorite part, <laughs> my favorite part is before he delivered the punchline, he turned and just fucking stared me down. <laughs> it's because I forgot the second part. I was about to end it right there, and I was like, "Wait a minute, oh, dude, Tooth, you have no idea how many people sent me a message and was like, dude, Tooth completely ruined baked beans for me forever.'" <laughs> And uh, also, this is uh, pretty funny. Uh, Heather Curley sent me a, a message about if we ever managed to start our official Brothers Commonplace cult. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've been trying, Heather. Oh, yeah. And because uh, we were talking about two's baked beans. And uh, she said the official cult meal would be. Oh, here we go. She, here we go. The official cult cult meal would be turkey pot pies, bison, baked beans, and Kool-Aid jammers. Oh, yeah. And uh, then we also added in some Fago for our fallen juggalo brothers, she said. <laughs> so thank you, Heather Curley, for our cult meal. I really can't wait to get a cult. I would really... I've honest to God thought about joining a cult just to fucking hang out with people. And uh, also because I don't want to live and I kind of don't want any of you guys to live either. <laughs> so I figured we'll get a good meal on us and we'll just fucking all say bye. Might as well. So Imagine joining the... Uh, who's the one that wore the Nikes? Heaven's Gate. Imagine joining Heaven's Gate and not drinking the cool and then when they all died, you just snuck their shoes off and started a Payless shoeless. Do you <laughs> Payless? They don't have fucking Nikes there, do they? No, they got Champion. I mean, I don't even know if they exist. They anymore. have. They uh, did. I went and checked one out last they week. They have Starberries. <laughs> <laughs> I remember buying a pair of Shacks at a dollar store. Dude, I oh, had yeah. Shacks too, man. Every, those are the f dude. Two had these Shacks, the red and white. I still got them. They were fucking awesome. Well, well, they weren't awesome. They were pieces of shit. Yeah, but they the were end. funny. He would open them up and make them talk like it was a mouth, and he'd keep his wallet in there and stuff. <laughs> it was well. To conf not to confuse the listeners, it's because their shoes are like fucking 15 years old and like beat down. <laughs> They're pretty much like sandals. So, alrighty. Thank you all for listening. Be good. Stay safe. And laugh at the dark stuff. Hashtag fucking wild man. <laughs> hashtag wild man. Hashtag wild man from Queens. Oh, hashtag wild moms. Ooh. Hashtag thank you, Mark. Hashtag. Oh, someone hit us with a... Uh, I think it was a listener, Daniel, a different Daniel. Nope, I'm going to fuck that up. Let me pull it up real quick. No, it was a Dan, and I think he's also from Australia. Damn. Um, it was his birthday the other day, but he hit us with a hashtag pretzel dog, I think. Ooh. So Dan and Daniel, you know, fucking Australian Daniels, Australian Dan, yeah. all of our Australian Everybody listeners named Dan. Everybody from Australia. Hope y'all are doing well. Happy birthday, everyone. Now you guys are fucking all awesome. Didn't we just get a message from a girl from Australia? Yeah, yeah, we have all the... She sent us her breasts. No, that was my mom. Oh, That yeah. was breast milk, and that was also from Tim's mom. <laughs> yeah. so. I mean, she. I, I think she just thought you sounded thirsty in one of the episodes. <laughs> Here, will you give this to two if he sounds thirsty? <laughs> but she has her titty like those fucking garden hose things where it winds them up. <laughs> Please uh, extend the titty. Uh, hashtag oh, boy pussies. Oh, yeah. Hashtag boy pussy for sure. We haven't said that as, as much as we so. should. We should say that more. Anything else, guys? I don't think so. Hashtag wild horses. Fuck Ooh, yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs>
now it's time for the real podcast. It's time to break the cycle of waste and mess. Time to stop accepting that the way things have been done are the way they should be done. Control alt delete everything you thought you knew about how to period. We're flipping the script, we're throwing out the book, we're challenging the period status quo. The Diva Cup is eco-friendly, reusable, and offers up to 12 hours leak-free protection. So what are you waiting for? Join the inner revolution with the Diva Cup. The Diva Cup is used for menstrual flow only. Always read and follow the user guide. It's time to break the cycle of waste and mess. Time to stop accepting that the way things have been done are the way they should be done. Control alt delete everything you thought you knew about how to period. We're flipping the script, we're throwing out the book, we're challenging the period status quo. The Diva Cup is eco-friendly, reusable, and offers up to 12 hours leak-free protection. So what are you waiting for? Join the inner revolution with the Diva Cup. The Diva Cup is used for menstrual flow only. Always read and follow the user guide.